Hi there lovelies, I'm Rhonda Crimes. I'm a life and leadership coach supporting everyday people just like you to reflect and rework your everyday stories so you can step into the everyday leadership of your families and communities and create compelling, meaningful and fruitful lives every day. And today let's talk about Understanding Change Part 2. Last week I let you in on the fact that change is the universal constant. I introduced you to Isla Prigogine and his work on dissipative systems and solving the riddle of how systems of increasing order, that is systems that change, grow and evolve, can exist in the universe that is inevitably tending toward disorder and chaos. If you missed last week and this is all sounding a bit like goldigook, please go back and listen there first, <laughs> just for context and an understanding. I explained the scientific process of change, the law of increasing entropy and how open systems, like human beings, follow this universal law and are the ultimate dissipative systems, which evolve and grow not in spite of entropy or the amount of chaos and randomness, but because of it. You'll remember that every individual has a limit to how much chaos they can manage and release depending on their individual complexity. Some are open to new ideas and experiences while others actively resist and then suffer the most through this resistance and then evolve slowly or not at all. <clears throat> Remember that chaos precedes change. Whenever there is chaos, it means your current map of reality is not able to handle the environment. If handled consciously, this chaos can lead to positive change. I gave you these three things to remember in moments of chaos and discomfort. Number one, a new and higher threshold is waiting on the other side with a more evolved map of reality that will solve many of the problems the old map couldn't. Number two, chaos is a sign you're getting ready to create this new map of reality by reorganizing at a higher and more functional level. And number three, allow yourself to go through the chaos, fully embracing all it brings for you. It isn't there because of anyone or anything happening outside of you. It's there to make you grow and evolve. A lot of people don't recognize they're in chaos at the slightest hint of discomfort, they begin to self-medicate. They reach out for a drink, for food, sex, drugs, or an adrenaline rush. Anything to distract or mask their feelings. They don't embrace the chaos as an opportunity for growth. That by not taking advantage they are keeping themselves from evolving, which means that every time they experience the same stimulus, they'll become overwhelmed again. Also, most people don't take responsibility for the chaos or stress they are feeling. Rather, they project it onto something outside of themselves, blaming other people or events for how they're feeling or behaving. I'm stressed because of her. I'm stressed because of homeschooling. I'm stressed because of my kids, my partner, my job, finances, health, whatever. When in reality, you're stressed because your threshold for what you can handle is too low. And I believe the only real solution is to raise that threshold higher. So how do you do this? Use this five-step framework guide. One, 
acknowledge you're in chaos. So first off, notice when there is discomfort or stress and acknowledge it's a sign of chaos. It's a natural state of your brain's system or mental construct. Number two, realize it's happening because your threshold for what you can handle is too low to handle your current environment. When you feel the urge to blame or find a reason outside of yourself, check it. Remind yourself that this is chaos and it's the first step in reorganizing your map of reality at a higher level. Number three, remember this is a good thing. It means you're about to evolve to the next level where many current problems will disappear. The new map will work much better and that moment of chaos is actually an opportunity to embrace because once you, t you make the leap to the next level, you'll be able to handle more and lots of the things that were causing you to suffer and they'll simply fall away. Number four, let it be okay, this is happening. This is important. Let it be okay that you are in this temporary state of chaos. Going back to my caterpillar analogy, this is the cocoon stage. It's got to happen to become the butterfly. Let the evolution just happen. And number five, watch with curiosity and don't resist. Watch what is happening with curiosity and not judgment. Where do you feel it physically? What is it causing you to say or do or think? I'll go further into this curious stage in another video, but until then, use your journal to capture what is happening, much like taking down observational notes. Understand that resisting will make the process more painful and protracted. At worst, it can prevent you from evolving at all. And then the whole cycle will be continued. That is a guarantee because while your threshold is low, overwhelm will be reached more often. There are a few people who really understand how change works and instead they fight it. But even though they may win this battle, they're actually losing the war. By fighting the change, you'll get pushed past the same low threshold over and over and you'll experience the same pain over and over. Here's what happens when you resist. You can try and avoid situations where you get pushed past your threshold. Good luck with that. You can stay home, isolate yourself, don't participate in life, don't take in new information. Hmm. How has that been working during the pandemic and then the re-entry? You can find alternate means of blowing off steam when the pressure builds, getting angry, constantly worrying, getting anxious, compulsively talking excessive exercise. You can find ways to numb the experience. Binge on social media or TV and Netflix. Comfort eating, drinking to excess, taking drugs. Of course, your threshold will remain the same and you will keep the same limitations. You know what that feels like and if you're honest with yourself, you know it doesn't feel good and nor is it serving your own evolutionary growth. Understanding and embracing change will help and save you from long-term suffering. Change is natural. 
you don't need to know how to do it. The whole universe has been doing it for billions of years. Your own body has been doing it since fertilization. All you really have to do is get out of the way and let the natural process do its thing. Here are the steps again. One, acknowledge you are in chaos. Two, realize it's happening because your threshold for what you can handle is too low to handle your current environment. Three, remember this is a good thing. It means you're about to evolve to the next level, which many current problems will disappear. Four, let it be okay that this is happening. And five, watch with curiosity and don't resist. Next week, I'm going to talk more about letting whatever happens be okay, because this is often the first point of resistance. I hope this has been informative and please remember if your now is not the picture you've painted for yourself and you'd like any help on this discovery path or perhaps something that you can, you know you intuitively know or feel isn't letting your true colors shine through please get in touch with me. You can do it really easily. Just leave me a comment send me a private message, drop me an email, or pop over to my Calendly online diary using the link I've provided and we can set up an obligation-free curiosity call and see if we're a good fit for each other. Much love until next time.